Welcome to another episode of Eviad and Metal. This series is about painting a Games Workshop miniature to the best of my abilities in a limited amount of time. You can start watching the series from episode 1. It all started with this Black Templar Space Marine Captain and a certain demand by viewers to see a higher quality approach to painting. In this episode I'm going to show you how I painted this Solar Watch Custodes. As always, putting hours and hours of footage into a video that not only makes sense but also does not bore people is a bit of a challenge. So this is the masterclass cut and you can see all the in-depth tutorials on my Patreon as always. Last episode I was asking you, the viewers, to decide what I'm going to do for the next video. And the final vote went to Ravenguard. But I thought that would be kind of boring because I already painted a space marine that has black armor for this series. So I took the liberty to go down to the second place in the list, which was Custodes. I really should have known. Well, at least that's out of the way. I knew I would hate my life if I did the whole armor in gold because what I do here typically for this format is paint non-metallic metal. And no. Nine, 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 nine. So I decided to do a solar watch pattern instead, which of course offers the option to do some of the parts in gold and do the rest of the armor in an interesting white pattern. We will do the same for this video, so pause the video right now, go to the comment section and tell me what I should paint next and why it should be Space Wolves. I will paint whatever gets the most mentions and upvotes for the next video, but remember, I'm only going to do it if we get to 100 comments in the next 24 hours. And last time we didn't get to 100, but I still did it, and look what that gave me. A video that took 4 months to do. Okay, well now that this is out of the way, let's start. I have a compulsive disorder when it comes to undercuts. I just need to get rid of them. So the cleaning stage took longer than it should and on top of that these miniatures have a gigantic amount of detail. They're plastered with details. Getting rid of the mold lines without damaging them was a pain. On top of that the trigger of the rifle on the pole broke so I had to glue it back on. And then I continued cleaning the mold lines. You can see me getting frustrated when I realize how much is left to clean and how inaccessible some of this stuff is. So I got rid of a couple of the details that would have taken ages to clean. Jeez. I glued together everything and didn't bother with filling all but the major gaps. I only left the head detached so I could reach all the detail. Jeez, so much detail. Yeah, the sword. Even more detail. Nope. For the solar watch pattern, I wanted an interesting white that wasn't straight up white and I decided to experiment on his left foot. So I applied a base coat of brown and mixed the gray for the base color and ice yellow as a first highlight. I figured the armor would probably be somewhat polished and reflective, so I took that into consideration when sketching the highlight patterns. I'm going through the usual motions of non-metallic metal. Every edge has a dark area next to a bright area and so on. Adding more ice yellow to the mix in combination with the brown base coat gave an interesting off-white tone and I really liked the result. However, as I was continuing highlighting, I was interested in what happens if I add a cool grey like wolf grey to the mix which has a blue tint. Well, 
With another jump in value to go, I added white to the mix. Happy with my experiment, I continued to work on the other parts of the foot. But I decided to add some blue to the base coat brown for the parts that were more in shadow, like the inside of the leg armor. This did add another layer of color variation. Again, just because the gold is something that reads as white armor doesn't mean we have to go for a boring white base coat with one shadow or a similar approach. There will be an in-depth PDF guide on all the thoughts behind this painting approach on my Patreon, just like for any miniature I paint. Moving on, I actually mixed the base color from a dark brown with a turquoise blue, which to me seemed a bit easier to work with, and the basis of this series is not to take ages for each miniature, so I slightly adapted the colors to a streamlined process. Now if you are a follower of this series, then you already realize that my goal with the videos is to open up everyone's mind to a more open approach of miniature painting. And I want to show you that it's fun to think about colors and how they interact and how you can develop your own style with a few easy tweaks. And even if on first sight this might not really apply to army painting, I agree that you are probably not going to use all of the tweaks and things that I show you here. But try to keep an open mind and try to do the things that others maybe don't do and it will make your army stand out in a really satisfying way just because you put in your own interpretation of the source material. I am keeping ice yellow as my highlight color because it mixes up to an interesting gray. And I'm sticking to defining the shapes as if they were reflective and I incorporate reflections that would look credible on these shapes, like for example vertical lines on cylindrical parts. As you can see, I'm using horizontal brush strokes to paint these vertical lines, which might sound counterintuitive, but it helps with consistency and opaqueness of layers. This is something that a video can't really teach you. You need to practice with the brush to see what works for you and how to achieve opaque layers while blending at the same time. Using my brush control approach to painting, I alternate between painting consistent layers in a more sketching way, like here, and less opaque layers to achieve smooth transitions directly, like here. I have a video on layering and glazing that shows that both are just different parts of a spectrum and that explains the basics of this approach. I will leave a link to that in the description or just click the top right corner. I'm sticking to the linear motions for my highlights and I'm finishing off the more simple elements with the senator light approach. With most of the armor done, I wanted to start on the other defining elements, in this case the gold part. Even though I decided not to make the whole armor in gold like a regular custodus, there was still a lot of areas that would need the non-metallic gold treatment. I tried to find a new simple gold recipe and did some initial mixing and experimentation with browns and red tones and then I added a bit of orange brown by Vallejo. Again I started my exercises in non-metallic gold on the left foot. Who knew this would turn into a remake of a Daniel Day-Lewis movie? I was trying to find a yellow that worked with the base and ended up using flat yellow by Vallejo for the rich, 
yellow tones that we want in gold. Ice yellow was the color I used for the final highlight. With the recipe for gold established, I wanted to make it even simpler, so I replaced a lot of the brown mixing with just using a mix of black and red for the base color. It doesn't matter so much what we use as a first layer, it just has to be dark to establish our contrast. Building the midtones, and after that I again paint the highlights in flat yellow. Focusing on all the edges first and then filling in the reflection patterns. First on the sculpted details and then in a more free and way on the larger surfaces. Always making sure the shapes are outlined in the stage, because the edges always catch and reflect light, before moving on to filling in the reflections on the areas. People always ask me how I know where to put the highlights, but there's no right or wrong here. On these small parts I typically stick to one main reflection and put it slightly off-center. But it all depends. My advice is to just paint the reflection pattern, and if you don't like it, paint over it with base or mid colors. Sometimes we just have to do trial and error to find what works. If adjacent surfaces are angled in a similar way, I paint the reflection similar. If the angles are different, I oppose dark and light parts as per usual. The solar watch pattern has red shoulder guards, and I used a deep crimson red as a base. I knew I would probably not do too much with this since the dark red alone would look great, contrasting against the bright armor and the gold eagle. I ended up just highlighting the edge that faces the armor in the usual Games Workshop style, mixing in an orange for the first layer, and a bit of ice yellow for the second highlight, and I think it looks good enough. I base coated the plume with the same red and I started highlighting it with orange brown. As with most of the red I do, I wanted to build the contrast by shading down instead of highlighting a lot, because I don't like my reds to turn pink. You can see the whole tutorial video for this part and how to avoid the pitfalls of painting red in general on my Patreon campaign page. For the shading, I applied controlled layers of Badab Black, which I believe is now called Non Oil. I never realized they changed the name. I'm doing this very carefully, making sure the ink stays where I want it to. Inks, or shades, how Games Workshop calls them, tend to go everywhere. But if you control them, I find them a very powerful tool to create transitions and contrast. And the result really looks cool here after the second layer I applied was dry. I mixed in a bit of regular black because I decided I would fade the end of the plume out to black and a more opaque consistency helps with this. Afterwards I was highlighting up to grey by mixing in ice yellow. I'm starting the eagle the same way I did the other gold parts, and by now I have perfected my approach to gold, and going through the motions is almost muscle memory at this point. A 
I think these dudes are actually really good sculpts to practice any form of non-metallic metal on, because they have so many different shapes and angles, besides this amount of detail obviously potentially being very frustrating. But I think I'm done with non-metallic gold for a while now. I have a spare copy of this miniature from a supporter of the channel and I might even do a true metallics version with it just to see how much faster it goes. Let me know if you are interested in that. I wanted the power glaive to look somewhat traditional, so I base coated it in a dark turquoise. But I also wanted to do something unique and different. Mixing in a light blue, I started sketching some patterns for major reflections and started highlighting these with a line pattern. The lines were aligned parallel to the way the blade curved and they went through a few adjustment stages as I progressed. Eventually I was happy with the placement and I started to work in more reflections with the brighter blue. The intention was to create the pattern that could very well be some normal steel non-metallic but is tinted blue by the energy surrounding it. Working in more and more brighter colors and more and more smaller reflection lines to make the blade more interesting to look at. and eventually I'm switching to a mix of the base blue and black to put in a few dark lines to push the contrast even further. Here you can see that I was applying a glaze of turquoise to draw everything together and make the transition smoother. Using pure white selectively on the edges maximizes my contrast. I wasn't quite sure what to do with the adjacent area, so I painted the gold first and then decided to simulate a hot area that would cool off towards the edge, sort of like with a plasma weapon, and I think that worked out pretty good. There is an in-depth video about how I did the power glaive on my Patreon. There was a few more gold parts to do, like a bunch of lightning bolts on his chest. I mean, who is he? Zeus? Thor? Why arrows? Anyway, using the usual colors I treated the part in the middle like a sphere and painted a large main reflection on the upper half and a smaller bounce light on the lower part. The bolts were pretty straightforward, I just make sure that the edges are really bright and I'm painting a main reflection on both sides and keep a dark area in the beginning and end of the arrows. The second part left to do was the eagle on the back and the neck guard and again I think the lesson learned here is as long as you keep your contrast high and have a mid color that works, gold is not too hard to pull off. The reason I personally prefer non-metallic metal is that it feels a bit more like actual painting because I can layer and glaze as usual while getting true metallics right feels a bit like using technical paints. But that doesn't mean I find any of the two better or worse than the other, it all depends on what mood I want to give the miniature. For the gloves I wanted a color that fit with my color choice for the rest of the miniature, so I went for the red-brown that Games Workshop uses in the box arts. 
And after a base coat of a mix of scale colors, red leather and brown leather, I just added ice yellow as a highlight color. This increased the contrast, but it also desaturated the color, which is fine. I was going to fix that later anyway. I continued stippling on highlights, mixing in more and more ice yellow. I did the same for the dangling leather parts between his legs. What do they call that? Okay, I looked it up. It's a singulum. Anyway, mainly highlighting the edges and adding a few horizontal lines to mimic a structure. I then used brown ink to darken the recesses and also glazed the ink over the gloves to bring back saturation in the highlights and add a color variation at the same time. The string on top of the singulum had to stand out even though I wanted it red too, so I thought about using orange fluo paint by Vallejo. I started highlighting the knots with dark red and left the in-between parts black. Adding more and more Mephiston red, I went lighter and lighter and also put focus on the single strands at the end of the string. Once I had pure Mephiston red, I added orange fluo and it really pushed intensity. I really like that, so I added one last layer of pure orange fluo. Looks like I will be using this on other red parts in the future to avoid red turning to pink when increasing the contrast. For the metal parts, I mixed the dark turquoise I was using before and added some black. You see that I like to keep consistent colors on my miniatures for consistency reasons. <laughs> no shit. I also kept ice yellow as my highlight color until I later switched to white for the final highlights. Again using a stippling motion I applied the highlights aiming at a major reflection along the axis of the handle and I sketched in the reflections on the parts that allowed more interpretation. As I'm gradually adding more highlight color, I wanted these parts to be really bright and shiny to make them stand apart from the power weapon and to look a bit more like traditional metal. White for the last highlights, especially focusing on edges again and the main reflections. And focusing on a few culmination points for additional drama. I 
I did not put much focus on these parts back here, but I made sure that there was some culmination points of lights on them. In general, I was rather annoyed by all the details and how long it took. To add a bit more richness, I took the turquoise base color and I glazed a thin layer over everything I painted so far. This added some blue to the otherwise rather gray gradients. I first thought I would do the bolter casing and its extension in red, but I didn't want it to interfere with all the red parts, like visually melting with the glove for example. My approach to prevent that was to make them black and just highlight the black with ice yellow, which ends up as an interesting grey. Focusing on the edges, I defined the outlines. I do have a video about what's important to do while edge highlighting as well, if you are interested in that. All in all this looked a bit boring so I added a bit of texture by painting small cuts and scratches, just additional detail by adding random lines and dots before adding the last step of highlights. At this point I realized I had not painted the connective parts at the joints of the armor and I decided to add a base of my turquoise and black mix and then gradually highlighted smaller areas that ended in a combination point reflection of pure white. That's good enough. To tie the weapon together with the rest of the miniature, it made sense to have a bit of gold in there. So being in the process of cutting corners, I mainly focused on the edges of these shapes. Worked surprisingly well. I didn't have it in me to spend too much time on the gems, so I did a pretty standard approach to them. Making sure the brightness and the reflection on the lower side being made up out of the color I wanted the gem to read as. I chose turquoise here because red was already dominant and I had the hint of turquoise in the power sword and I didn't want to introduce another color. The goal was to create the bit of a crescent moon shape at the bottom and leave the opposite side black. I spontaneously decided to do a secondary reflection in the form of a circle in the middle of the sphere, 
there's a lot of fun to be had just improvising while miniature painting. Using pure white, I painted the total reflection points and I really like how simple it is to mimic a glass or mineral sphere with these simple approaches. I wanted a few distinct elements on the base, but I didn't want to spend more than an hour. I just broke off a few bits of cork and glued them to the base to simulate some rock structure. I put the larger one in the back and the small one would end up in front of the custodus. This is just a compositional decision. After spraying the rocks black, I applied a mix of turquoise and orange brown and added a mix of yellow and ice yellow as a highlight. I always wanted to try the Citadel texture paint, so I took Martian Iron Earth and applied a thick layer. To detail the earth part a bit more, I took Martian Iron Crust and applied it around the rocks, which is where weather and wind would make sand and earth particles scatter. After I was satisfied with the placement, I took a blow dryer to quicken the drying time of the texture paint and I really liked the result. There's still room for improvement, but that's the topic for another video. I thought about applying regular paint below the Martian Iron Earth, but I thought the black would provide some interesting shading for the cracks. I was not entirely satisfied with the rubble around the rocks, so I applied more iron cross to make up for that. When this was dry, I drivers the mix of yellow and beige on to bring some variation to the groundwork. I left the darker space where the custodes would later stand to create the shadow effect and I added some more contrast here and there by applying brown ink. Then it was time to put everything together. This is always my favorite part. The moment a project ends and you see the result. I just glued the miniature to the base. Obviously, if this were a gaming piece, I would keep the pin for more stability. And that's it. Don't forget to go to the comment section and let me know what I should paint for the next video. Subscribing and activating notification helps the channel a lot, so thanks if you do. If you want to see the more in-depth video tutorials and PDF painting guide to this miniature and over a hundred videos and PDFs, as well as helping make more free YouTube videos, you can join my Patreon campaign. As little as one dollar goes a long, long way. And even at that level, you can join the Discord and get some personal feedback on your latest work. Thanks a lot to all my already existing patrons, I could not do this without you.